everybody. Wow. There's one person missing, but listen, Matt couldn't be here today. But instead, we have Alexi Lawless, ESPN's very own. I'm very happy about this. How are you doing today? I'm excited. I, you know, uh, where, where did he go? Why can't he be here? So we normally have two hosts, oh. and he decided to go to Chicago and then Michigan. The wife dragged him somewhere. Lame. Yeah, and I feel Lame. like this is better one-on-one -on -one time. It is. Really it get is. to the, the center of information. Yep. Alexi Lawless, of course, from ESPN, the soccer world in general, all over the place in that world. You played. You, you, were, you generally managed. Yes. <laughs> you generally I managed, managed. I managed generally. You managed you know, generally. On, yeah. And now you're in the broadcast world yep. doing, doing uh, analyst work, both in the studio, with games, and everything like that. So I guess, first of all, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm in uh, Manhattan. I came in here to sweat. Yeah. Uh, and to uh, to hang out with uh, my friends from uh, AT and T and, sure. and BlackBerry, and uh, we had a good day of, of pictures. And uh, I got a new BlackBerry Q10. That's not so bad. So I'm pretty psyched. Some I, gadgetry. I learned how to use it, and I have yet to offend anybody or lose my job. So that's good. <laughs> and uh, we had a good time. So you nice. know, we're excited. We're excited. Are you a big tech guy? Uh, to a certain extent, yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I, I remember the day that you were talking, uh, you were friends with Taylor Twelma, one of my colleagues yeah. uh, uh, at ESPN who does soccer, and I remember him talking about Twitter years ago, and I was saying, that's the stupidest Never thing ever. Never last. And now, you know, I can't, I can't go a day without tweeting something. Right. So... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I do, I, I do as much technology as I possibly can. And nowadays, in, in my current capacity, it, right. it, it, like Twitter or, or it, in Twitter, sure. that's where I get all my information. Absolutely. Yeah, you know? Who are your favorite Twitter follows? Who uh, keeps you entertained? <clears throat> Let's see. How about um, uh, Richard Deutsch? Mm -hmm. uh, at Sports Illustrated, uh, yeah. Over at Sports Illustrated. Yeah. I, I love fighting with him. Sure. Um, that's, that's always fun. Uh, Does Grant, he not like you? No, no, no. We're, we're good. We're I'm, good. I can sure, you know, yeah. He screams and yells about ESPN, and mm. I'll scream and yell about uh, uh, you know, Sports Illustrated uh, sure. swimsuit issue, and I'll bring that up, and then you know, that kind of <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so, it's a good time. It's fun. It's, it's a good time. So there's a lot. I, you know, I follow like, um, a lot of 80s metal type of uh, really? sites. Who's doing Metal it? Sludge and that type of okay, stuff. Okay, sites, so. not bands themselves. Oh, I follow Rat because Rat is the biggest and the greatest band uh, ever, not? ever. Right. Um, and the world is is better because Rat has been in it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, and then a lot of soccer for the stuff. You know. Sure. Yeah. All right. So, and you you were in the musical world. You still you still jam it. I still I still jam. Is that what the kids rare, are saying? No, Jamming it? No? no. There's no kids still, that see. I ever look said that. I look relatively young, but I'm like 73 years old. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, you I'm know, music has been a big part of your life for I a am while. Still, yeah. yeah. To answer your question, I'm yeah. still jamming it. <laughs> I apologize no. profusely yeah. for saying jamming it. That's okay. Um, so you what? Make it sound dirty. <laughs> I do a little bit. Yeah. That's the producer in the booth. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the the un there he is waving. Hello. Um, Hello. So so what has been the the biggest. Uh, I don't know what has been the biggest prize for you. What is what do you what are you most proud of when you look back at all of the different things that you've done? What has brought you the biggest sense of accomplishment? Where we are, I mean, when it comes to soccer in the United States. Yeah, uh, I grew up. I grew up. You know, I'm a child of of the '80s soccer experience. Mm -hmm. So, you know, back then we didn't have. Uh, at that point, the NASL had gone out of existence. There wasn't a professional league. We right. didn't have soccer on TV that you could watch consistently. Right. We didn't have good coaching. We didn't have stadiums. We didn't have all of this kind of stuff. And to see where it's come in, well, when I look back on it it, it, it looks like a long time. It really isn't relative to other sports and other leagues. So where this sport is today, right. uh, on the field in terms of the, the soccer that we're producing, off the field in terms of the business that we're producing, I right. mean, not to belabor the point, but at t or somebody like that doesn't want to be involved in soccer just because it's a good game. They want to be involved because it's a good business. Yes. And we are at a point in 2013 where soccer is a good business. And that's, uh, that's gratifying to have played a small little role along the way. Where do you think the tipping point was? Was it, was it the World Cup in the middle of the 90s? Where, where was it specifically that said that, okay, the MLS can now become a growth industry? Where is it where like ESPN and Fox and NBC are all paying right. premium for, for leagues around the world? Where do you think 
the was there a specific explosion point? Was it a slow growth thing? Where where can yeah, you point there, to? There's some there's some moments. There's some platforms. Ninety four World Cup was huge. It introduced people to what soccer can be when it's played at its highest level, right? And the atmosphere around a game and and how unique it is in the sporting world. Mm -hmm. uh, then a couple of years later, MLS comes along, struggles initially, but there's there's certainly an interest when they started having owners that believed in it. Uh, also from an infrastructure standpoint, building stadiums, Phil Anschutz with the Home Depot Center out right. there, the, you know. Red Bull Arena now around here, those types of things, that's huge. I also think in the way that, let's say, ESPN, we went about our, our business in 2010 a few years ago right. uh, with the World Cup and broadcasting in a way that we, we no longer dumbed it down. We weren't going to stop. Uh, right. We weren't going to stop and explain what a throw-in is to people. If they didn't get it, they'd figure it out along Absolutely. the way. People and th are smart. Yeah, exactly. And so I think that was huge in terms of providing an authentic um, type of uh, viewing experience. Mm -hmm. You were talking earlier about a place like Portland, right. um, where you went to school, mm -hmm. and uh, the Portland Timbers, and that type of organic, authentic soccer experience that now exists. It's almost this, this counterculture niche that was so underground is, has come above ground. And it, right. it is an army and continues to get bigger. All right, and so who else is doing it right around the country right now? Before we talk international, we talk about Portland with the timbers and the chainsaws and the sure, singing. Sure. So who who else is growing when you look at just regionally around the, the states? Seattle. I mean, you have your your Los Angeles and New Yorks, and and there's certain things that they're doing well and certain things right. that they aren't. And it's, I don't do this compare and contrast because it is an apples and oranges thing sure. sometimes. And Seattle will tell you that everything they do is the best thing ever, and that they invented uh, soccer and everything else. Right. I love you, Seattle. Don't <laughs> scream and yell. I mean, I know you're going to. I mixed but... on Seattle. I'll put that on the record as, a, as just as, as an a, Oregon a, fan. As and just, eh. No, I, I like I enjoy Seattle. <laughs> I enjoy smoked salmon. Sure. Well, Portland fans are going absolutely. Seattle doesn't know what they're doing, but right. you know they're ju they're just as bad half the time anyway. And we only say that because they are right now. That's what everybody's measured against is right. Portland, Seattle in terms of what they're doing in Major League Soccer. But there's a lot of other places right now uh, uh, that are exciting. Kansas City, for example. Yeah. You know the, the, AT the Dynamo. Listen, they got the AT and T MLS All Star Game this uh, this summer uh, at the end of July against. Uh, MLS All-Stars against Roma. And the reason why it's going there is because they have great local ownership. They right. changed it around from when it used to be the Wizards, Sporting KC. They have a great stadium right there. And they have a community that looks at their soccer team, their professional soccer team, as, as just like any other professional team right. in that area. All right. So Wright Thompson recently wrote something for ESPN. I don't know if you, you read it. He went throughout Italy mm -hmm. yep. and, and went to a, a number of small towns examining the sort of politics and, and the way fans identify and get sort of deranged about and, and mixing political views and their soccer fandom. So if I'm going to interpret this correctly, you're saying Seattle is where that's going to bubble up first. <laughs> that's the logical progression? Yep, that's where I went with that. Well, I think it's interesting. Where will, where will it actually be taken that seriously? It, it will it will it will be taken that seriously, but without the same sort of okay. uh, effects that the are that are ingrained yeah. uh, in, in the cultures that you're talking right. about. And I think that's a good thing. And it actually brings up a point about we're creating something pretty unique and special here. And right. sometimes we have an inferiority complex when it comes to our soccer, uh, our American soccer on and off the field. Right. The reality is it's pretty special what we created, and, and we like to kick ourselves for what we haven't done. But you also have to pat yourself on the back for what you have done. Right. We have something that is uniquely American. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's based on a game that's played around the world, but we've kind of taken the bests of all world, and we've created something that you can say, well, that kind of stuff that exists over there, the bad stuff that exists, and there's plenty of it, right. get rid of it. We don't need it. Even if it becomes the most incredible and popular sport in the U.S., it's going to be uniquely American, and that's not a bad thing. Right. And you've traveled the world, obviously. Mm -hmm. the, the, the game has taken you all over the, the globe. Where have you been scared? I've never been uh, <laughs> ah. scared. No. Uh, not I, scared, but just like... What exactly is going on here? I, I enjoy playing the villain. Um, okay. You know, uh, and, and I enjoy a agitating. Sure. Um, uh, You're a heel. I, I am. I yeah. am. I am an incredibly uh, soulless uh, <laughs> possessor of the mutant gene heel. Right. Um, uh, so I enjoyed going into these cauldrons, especially down in Central America, mm -hmm. these places where it's, you know, uh, guard dogs and machine guns and moats and people throwing. Bags Coins of urine and yep. yeah, the, the bags of urine thing and batteries and all that kind of stuff. I love that. I, I you know I was kind of like uh, it was a punk show for me where it just you right know, spit on me. It was I, anarchy, I love yeah. I love it. Complete anarchy. So the, was there <laughs> so, a, a stadium, a country, a club, anything that stands out? 
Mm, I mean, going down to a place like uh, Costa Rica to play down there when they used to play in their old stadium was crazy. It was nuts. And we had everything that you hear about um, b during the game and before the game, people blaring music and having huge parties outside the hotel, pulling fire alarms, all that kind of stuff uh, goes on. And, you know, when we're in those places, it's soccer. It is It is a religion when they talk about that. Yep. It's, it's absolutely. And starting with the stuff that you were talking about earlier, um, you know, the the political aspects of it and the social aspects and cultural things that happen and are related to soccer, sometimes it's hard for us to understand in the United and States. The lines being blurred, yeah. Exactly. So. All right, interesting. And now in your current role, obviously you're tasked with both speaking while action is happening mm -hmm. and explaining it on the fly, as all, all color commentators do. But also in the studio, you're breaking down things, and it becomes very granular. Like, sure. okay, this is this is the system they're running. This these are the players that are upcoming. This, these types of things. Who takes you out of the sort of analytical world and just like put makes you a fan? I think right now people will look to Neymar, who is this uh, phenomenal player uh, for Brazil that is emerging. He just signed. Just got yeah. transferred to Barcelona, so we'll see a lot of him playing with what is arguably the best player, Lionel Messi, sure. over there. Uh, I think he has that moment that a lot of these stars do in, in any sport where they get the ball, they get the puck, they get whatever it, it ends up being. Right. And you sit up in your seat and you hold your breath because you know that there's the potential for something amazing to happen at that moment. And that's what that's what stars are to, to me, as, right. as far as I'm concerned. And in my capacity, uh, I'm there uh, to inform and to do it in an entertaining way. And uh, I still got a long way to go, but I love what I'm doing. I love talking about soccer and making it something that people uh, enjoy. Um, uh, not everybody <laughs> is what I sure. do, but uh, oftentimes they they have uh, they disagree, which is for me fine. I could care less if, if you disagree. As a matter of fact, right. if if people aren't disagreeing to a certain extent, you're not you're not doing your if job. If people aren't feeling something, yeah, exactly. then, then you're sort of boring. Exactly. So it's good that they're disagreeing. So what is it about Neymar specifically? What is his sort of transcendent potential? As because he's still quite young, but what is it about him? He he takes players on one on one, mm -hmm. uh, and so there is the, the flair that we talk about in soccer, that individual skill. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of have gone out of the game because of the tactics that exist it's it's very difficult to do it sometimes and right. so when you have a player who not only has the ability but has the desire to take players on one-on-one -on -one, that moment that i talked about is there consistently he gets the ball he looks up a guy comes at him and then it's you know th this this stare down and then the moment of truth right and when it happens uh, oftentimes when i'm talking about a guy like neymar it happens in a in a brilliant and a beautiful way right and so and, and the, the sort of tactics and strategy and rosters it's been a big talking point with the men's national team sure. here sure. here in the states and during klinsman he came under a lot of fire mm -hmm. uh just for his methods and the way he approaches it which has been in a, in a sort of different and very german or whatever uh whatever way that he he went about it um how much has the seat cooled beneath him uh, because of this summer and spring, well, just like any sport, you win. People are going to solve everything. Benefit. Yeah. It solves a lot of things. And and to be and to be fair, um, I think he's done an incredible job over the last month in getting results. Uh, I at times have been critical with him, uh, of him, and I think I've been. Uh, fair about it because right. it's all in the context of what he promised when he took over, which was um, a very different, uh, some would say radical way of looking at the game and having the players look at the game, being more proactive, playing a possession-oriented style, right. uh, and really having them play a different way. Um, and that's that's fine, but if that's what you're going to do, then when I see two years down the line the team play, I have to put it up against that and compare and contrast against right. that. And too often, I don't see that this team is necessarily any different. I see that it's progressed, right. but I feel that it's a natural progression that could have happened under any number of coaches sure. uh, in terms of the individual guys that are playing well uh, and a team that just grows with, with time and gets better. So th that's that's my, not my concern, but if there is a critique right now, right. Uh, that's where it stems from. And I think that that's fair and I think it's warranted. Sure. But ultimately, he's, he knows he's going to be judged in what happens next summer in Brazil. And that's that's why he's been paid a lot of money to when that moment comes where the opportunity to beat a team and to go into uh, the region that we haven't been as a U.S. national team comes, that's when he has to be able to put that 11 out there that, that, that can do it. Philosophically, do you think his system in the long term is right? Because when you look at coaches across any sport, the strength of, of great coaches are that they can shape a system to their personnel. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Klinsman's system in the long term is 
befitting of the roster that he has and continues to develop. Yes, but I don't think it's a, a different system. So I think, oh, in, in right. essence, he's he's just continuing on. And by the way, that would have been fine if he had just said, look, I, I, am, I believe a, a national team coach is a caretaker, and ultimately you want to leave it in better position right. than when you took it over. And that's what you do, and you move it along. That's what other play, uh, t- uh, coaches have done. So this system, if you will, that sure. Jurgen Klinsmann is employing, I don't see it a different, uh, as a different system. As a matter of fact, I would submit that at times when he is needed to get the result, he has actually gone back and not regressed, right. but reverted to form and incorporated the, um, the attributes that have actually made the U.S. strong over the years mm-hmm. and used those to his advantage to get the ultimate success. So uh, it's, it's a strange thing. And uh, I talk to Jurgen all the time, both in a professional uh, uh, aspect and, and privately. He's, right. a, he's a friend of mine, and I challenge him on these things. Right. And to his credit, he, he, he has answers. We sometimes disagree. Uh, at times, we agree on different things. But I think he also appreciates the fact that there are people that are willing to question and talk about this stuff. I mean, that's, that's how you progress. So what, what's the major, is the major difference with his philosophy more off the field, more training methods? Yeah. It's a lot of nutrition stuff I know that he brought in. Do, is, do, you, do you feel like the, the national team is still fully buying in? Well, for example, um, I ask him on a consistent basis, and I ask the players on a consistent basis to right. tell me. Uh, it's a simple question. In the two, two and a half years, whatever it ends up being, uh, that Jurgen Klinsmann's been the coach, um, is the team better? Right. And if so, in what way? Invariably, none of them will answer the question. Now, is it because they don't want to answer a question? Because, in essence, if you answer it, you're saying, well, it's better. And you're saying, well, the previous regime and and Bob Bradley's team didn't do this. Right. Uh, Or do they not have an answer? And uh, I I think that that's troubling. Uh, I wish that they would say, this is how this team is better. But when I look at this team... I struggle to find a lot of things that you can really? say, this is how this team is better. Now, I'm not saying it, it hasn't progressed, but as I said before, I think it's much more of a natural progression. Who do you think has taken the most strides within the team with, with, under the leadership of Klinsman? Michael Bradley. Okay. Uh, and, and it's ironic because the change of coach is what I think has also enabled him to thrive. Okay. Uh, his, his father was the coach. Sure. And that is a difficult gig, man. That is right. That's so heavy. Hard. Yeah. That is hard in, any, in anything that you do in life to have your dad as, as your teacher. Your, you know, just your to have leader. him around, right, yeah, and to, to grow. Yeah. We, all, we all love our dads, but they can be a pain in the ass. It's know? time to fly away sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, well uh, you know, Michael Bradley flew, and he is, he right. is soaring right now. Um, he went and played in Italy, uh, and I think that did a world of good in terms of tactically and, and the discipline that's t- that needs to play that position. Right. And I just think that that he, under Jurgen Klinsmann's system, you're going to said, you're the man, everything flows through you, and he has the capacity now to accept that responsibility and the technical ability to be able to do it. So I think he, number one, we're talking a lot over the last month about Josie Altidore, mm-hmm. uh, and it's great because you want a guy up there scoring goals. Right. Uh, but I would also say that the reason why it's great is that there's nobody else. And if Josie Altidore isn't scoring goals, that's tough. there is nobody coming along. There is no cavalry to take his place. So if you're Jurgen Klinsmann and a U.S. soccer fan, you want this to continue as long as just possibly can, and, and obviously, ideally, all the way through the World Cup next summer. Right, and, and one of the points you bring up is interesting, and the cavalry isn't behind him. There's, ne- there's not a next great score that we can point to immediately mm-hmm. as this is the guy. And it was interesting because I was speaking with Jim Currier early this week, and that's a, a question in American men's tennis as well. It's, it's sort of the development and the youth, and right. how do you develop uh, Americans to, to perform extraordinarily well on the international stage. So at this point, how happy are you with the development process of American soccer? Oh, I'm very happy with it. Okay. I, I think that the, the way that, that it is being looked on is in a mature and professional way. Uh, our biggest strength is also at times our, our greatest weakness in that the size of the country and uh, the diversity that we all love mm-hmm. at times can hinder our, our, our growth because we're, we're trying to fit so many different people and we talk about this melting pot. And that's all fine and well, but at a certain point you have to say, you know what, this is who we are going to be as a national team, right. as a sports you need, team. There's an identity that's needed. And you got to be able to fit into that and recognize that some very good players aren't going to be able to fit into that, but for the good of the, of the future, that's okay. That's okay because we are so big. But I do believe that the developmental process that's in place right now, we once again, we, we have an inferiority complex, right. but we have some very, very good coaches. We have academies now for most of the MLS teams mm-hmm. that enable players that we recognize as talented to play, that don't have to pay, all that kind of stuff. Um, and we also have a generation that's grown up 
watching soccer and having soccer as part of their sports landscape. Yep. And, and that's important. So it's not just some some dad uh, who's just been called upon to go and coach his, his soccer team. Maybe it's a dad who played high school and college sure. soccer and has it much more. Now, as we get further and further, that education will be much greater. But right now, uh, I think we're, we're headed in the right direction when it comes to development. So if you, you were an absolute power, what identity should the national team, what, what direction does that go in? You have, you know, Spain is very possession oriented, mm -hmm. but they have the athletes to, to finish. Um, Brazil, obviously the beautiful game and everything like that. And Italy flops. Sure. Absolutely. That's their identity. I, I don't believe that's what they okay. consider, that's but, okay. but okay. you're not it's arguing not with down, that. But. It's not written down. Sure. <laughs> um, so given the, the interest and given the athletes that enter into the soccer world, uh, what, what established identity do you feel like the American team should go into? I think, I think first and foremost, a recognition that, um, the physical part of the game, um, is something that is ingrained in our sports culture sure. and something that should always be evident. Patrick uh, Willis types. But no, no, and, and <laughs> it doesn't, and it doesn't mean you know everybody has to be six foot seven, right. uh, And and bulging muscles, but a ruggedness, I guess, is what what I'm talking about when okay. I, when it comes to it. And, a, and an American sports ruggedness that has always existed, and to also recognize that within that ruggedness, the prototypical American athlete isn't necessarily the one that is going to be successful. Right. Uh, sometimes you'll see. Um, players walking if you watch if you saw Lionel Messi walking down the street and you didn't know who he Wouldn't was think twice like, yeah you know, who's this guy right you know? and there's other players too that they don't necessarily look the part right and oftentimes in our American way of growing things we 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 dismiss players because they don't look the part they don't right. walk the right way or you know that kind of stuff and that's dangerous in the game of soccer maybe it works for other sports but in the game of soccer that's right. dangerous so uh, and that's where I think the recognition and the value of this diverse country that we live, live into comes into play. So there has to be a set of, this is what an American player is, and I talked about the physical part of it, and we can go on and say this, 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 this. Right. But with, uh, uh, and that just has to be a, a, a part of it from the start. But right. then from that, you can have players that add on this tool and this tool and this tool and this tool. So, sure. uh, you know, ultimately, I also think that knowing what we can't do is as important as knowing what we can Absolutely. do. Absolutely. It applies for a lot of things in life. And right now, trying to be a better soccer team and, and play with more possession is is admirable at times, but also players recognizing in certain moments what they can't do and recognizing that if they try to do something that they can't do, mm -hmm. they could pay for it. Is there a country that you look to, not necessarily as a model, because you have all the traditional powers, they've been playing the game, they've, they've focused so much energy on the game for so long. Has there been an emerging country that has gotten better at a, at a pace that maybe Americans couldn't model themselves after, but can, at least in the back of their minds, say, it can be done? Is there a country that you feel like has done it correctly? The, the problem is, is there, I, I don't, I can't think of a country that is of the size and the diversity of the United States. Right. Um, when you have a smaller country, it's easier to do. When you have a country that, to be quite honest, is less diverse, it, it's easier to do. So people uh, can, can point to different countries that have had success. But right. But I, I think it, it is a, a very, very unique situation, which is probably why it's that the hardest to crack is to figure out how to have all this uh, this diversity working within one group. And to be, as I said before, uh, at a certain point, I think we have to go at it the opposite way instead of saying, well, let's try to fit everybody into this one pot. Let's define this pot and then have everybody else from the outside figure out how to get into it. Right. All right. So when you look forward to Rio, which you said, provided you don't do anything dumb, you will be there. Yes. Calling matches, yes. analyzing matches. Who has momentum, aside from the traditional powers, mm -hmm. who has momentum that is suddenly not really an upstart, but but a, a country that you can say, like, they're going to sneak up on people? Uh, a, team, a team like Belgium right now mm -hmm. uh, is going through, and we, we talk about this for a lot of different countries, they're, they're going through a, a golden generation type of uh, uh, type of moment right here. And, and that's great. Right. Um, and I think watching a Belgium, if and when they qualify for the World Cup and how they do in the, quali in, in the World Cup, right. given that that golden generation tag because sure. we've also also seen where it's been too much pressure for mm -hmm. a smaller country like belgium to to uh, to do it that would be one uh, that certainly to watch right now colombia is getting a lot of attention uh, and it's not that colombia hasn't been good in, in the past they have uh, but right now this generation and it is a generational type of thing is this group of players that's that, that's coming up uh, especially for a team that goes up and down as opposed to the the 
you know, the elite type of team. Right. Now, when you look back at your career, I, I don't want to use the term regret, but sure. do you do you ever think, like, man, it would have been really fun to play now oh, yeah. with all of the cameras, sure. with all of the lights, where, sure. like, honestly, you, you were in a place where you helped develop and help really, like, bring the popularity to the masses with soccer, but do, do you look back now and say, like, I could have been playing in front of full stadiums, I could have been traveling the, the globe in a much different way <laughs> had you been playing in, from 2008 to, to the, the current time? Yeah, but I also recognize that, you know, if I had had Twitter, I would have had, like, a, like a two-week-long career. <laughs> right. Also very true. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I believe that if you're, if you're a good player, you adapt. Uh, so this, this whole thing that we do where we say, well, if, if Jordan played then, or, you know, if Jordan right, played right. now and all that kind of stuff, it, it, you adapt to the, the, the situation that you're put in. I think good players will figure it out. Um, that's a long way of saying I, I don't regret. I mean, I milked, I milked it. I milked it for all it was worth on Absolutely. and off the field. I had a blast doing you it. You look like you did. I burned both ends, and it was <laughs> it was awesome, and it was fun. It was wild west too. I mean, sure. and nowadays, uh, I'm so happy. I'm not one of those old guys that say, oh, when I was back playing, all that kind of stuff. Right. I'm proud of the fact that players don't have to do some of the stuff that, that we had to do on and off the field and we had to go through on and off because it means progress. And so, I, What did if, you have to go through? What, do you, you what, what, what does that mean? Well, the charter flights and oh, yeah. uh, the amount of money that they make right now and the opportunities uh, that they get from a marketing standpoint um just the, and just the the fact that their league let's take mls for example mm -hmm. is established it isn't going anywhere i mean right. <laughs> we were playing in a league we didn't even know if it was going to be in existence in the next year right. they get to go and play at the uh, red bull arena or, or the home depot center they get to go into an environment like portland uh and seattle but without what happened before, and right. by the way, what happened a long time before I ever came along sure. uh, in terms of the players on the field and the people and the men and women working off the field, without that, you, you don't get to 2013, you don't get to 2014. So I'm proud of it all, and I wouldn't have done it differently, I don't think. Do you ever introduce think. yourself as Alexi Lawless? Pioneer. Pioneer, uh, ambassador. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Founder of the game. <laughs> It's okay if you do. You have my permission. Yeah, I have a card. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to go through, and we have some pictures of, of your playing days, and uh, I want to go through the very hirsute man. I like that word a lot, hirsute. It is, I know. Um, if we can bring that up on the monitor, a picture of I want to go through the looks to just sort of power rank and get an idea. We have, we have some pictures. I can pictures. imagine what they look like. Uh, maybe we don't know. have some pictures. You, uh, you didn't give those to Mike. I didn't give those to Mike. All right, so let, let's just talk about them. Let's through, talk about them. Let's the talk man about knows them. what he used to look like. Yes. Never has so much been done with a modicum of talent, um, right. you know, a, a blow dryer, some hot oil treatment, and a guitar. So That's what it was? That was it, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it took a lot to look like I just rolled out of bed. People think, oh, wow. it's just, you know, this grunge... Um, hippie-esque type of existence but oh no no it's you know scrunchies and like i said wow. conditioners and hot oil treatments and split ends and all that kind hot of stuff oil yeah. treatments when it's how long did how long did the situation take i don't even know what that would be called so, so I, we're talking about the chin yeah years years ago for those that weren't around i had really really long hair and, and a goatee that just went down to basically about here yeah, so sternum level I, before the 1994 world cup uh i was training with the team and at that point i was just trying to make the team and right. uh about a, about a year and a half before the the summer of 94 i was on a week-to-week -week contract basically and the coach at that point bora milotinovich wow. had had his assistant call me into a room <laughs> and say uh bora wants you to cut your hair and i screamed and yelled this is america blah 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 but you know i was a young punk and uh, i would have done anything to be on the team so right. in phoenix i walked into a place and the lady <laughs> shaved it and I, I was completely had nothing and um he never talked to me about my hair again. From, from that day All forward, right. uh, I grew my hair and I grew this huge goatee. Um, and it just felt comfortable. It was something that I wanted right. to do. But it was a test and I passed it. And like I said, he never, ever said another word about my hair. And when it got to 94 and that, that summer, uh, you know, I, I grew up um, being obsessed with 80s glam sure. and, and that kind of stuff. And, and the theater and i've always considered myself an entertainer and a mm -hmm. performance a, a performer i don't think that that takes anything away from uh wanting to win or being competitive uh you practice what you do and then you take it out on stage or take it out on the field uh, and sometimes it goes well and sometimes it doesn't but you want that reaction and whether that reaction is people screaming and yelling or people spitting on you right <laughs> it, you get that it you, happens you get that intense emotional reaction and i love the theater of the game i love the personalities in the game i love right. the visuals of the game and uh so yeah it was it was cultivated to a certain extent 
but it was also something that I was very comfortable with at the time. And I, I never forgot that if you don't couple it with an ability actually on the field, right. then you're just a clown. And True. I didn't want to be a clown, although maybe... And Somebody you probably got anyway. mistaken for the lead singer of the Spin Doctors. All <laughs> oh, the Spin Enough. Doctors, yes. I get so. quoted Spin Doctor stuff <laughs> every day. So, there, so there's that fun benefit, too. Were, were you ever, I mean, were people on the field? Do they have fun with that at all? Yeah, but it was also back, I mean, if you look back in the 80s and 90s, there was a lot of crazy True. hair and looks and uniforms. And we in 94, we had the faux denim jerseys. Mm. And, that was an interesting it's idea. It's a great look. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Bring yeah. it back. Yeah. So uh, there was just a lot of stuff. Nowadays, it's I think players are, are more scared to express themselves, to be quite right. honest with you. And and when one does, the the tendency is to s- just scream down and say, what's this person doing? How could he possibly right. do it? Disgrace. I, I love I love. You know, people like Mario Bulatelli. I love those. Sure. I love the characters in the game in any sport, to be quite honest. Absolutely. That's why I watch. Absolutely. Um, speaking of any sport, we have a clip I mentioned to you before we started. Jim Courier mm. was here. Yes. And we had a very important question. We posed it to him about the unique role that redheads have played in the past 25 <laughs> years of sporting. Can we actually roll that clip? I, I'm almost positive the we have that. redheaded athlete of the past 25 years. The uh, past 25 years. Boris Becker may have something to say about that. Was that was sort of tail end, yeah. I feel like. Yeah. You have Lawless. Know. Lawless, Lawless. Yeah, I, I do, get, do you feel I like empathy when you see guys? Do you like when you see Andy Dalton? Are you like, feel, all right, brother? I feel sorry for anyone with our complexion who picked the job that's outside. Outside, it's a terrible idea. You know, your parents should know better than that. All right. <laughs> so that was Jim Courier yeah, on the yeah. redheaded plight. Now, where yeah. will you rank yourself? Past twenty-five years, so going back to like eighty-eight. Right. Where do you rank? So the, the the luminaries that have been. So Bill Walton retired in eighty-nine, but that's we're not counting that. It's the past right. twenty-five years. Yeah. You have Sean White. Okay. Mark McGuire? Yeah, I don't know. Not Mark McGuire. I'll put Sean White ahead of Mike, Mark McGuire, yeah. Okay, you have yeah. Wade Boggs, lifetime 328, something something there, hitter. No idea who Wade Boggs is. Wade Boggs, no, third no. baseman, Hall of Fame third baseman for the Red Sox and Yankees and Devil Rays. Okay, okay. and then you have, I'm trying to think of who else, we, the Sedin Twins, hockey oh, players. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good. You have Andy Dalton, yeah. playoff quarterback, really hasn't proven it on the top level, right. I, I would say. Right. I'm trying to think of who else we have in these past few years. It's not much, to right. be quite honest with you. It's, so where do you fit in? Pick. Well, I mean, if that list, I mean, I'm the, not only and then at Courier. the top, but I'm the president. And the, wow. The, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Come okay. on. That's fair. For the yeah, McGuire would... juiced, and baseball's a pretty sedentary situation. As far as, like, best athlete? Oh, well, that's a different story. I just, I mean. No, no, I'm saying, no, I'm saying why you would be ahead of Mark McGuire. As he an athlete? stood around. As an athlete? Yeah. It, well, you know, it was kind of an, uh, an arts and craft type of sure. thing with, that Absolutely. he did, right? Absolutely. It's, I mean, it's a parlor game. <laughs> kind of a parlor game. <laughs> it's a parlor game. So then you have Courier, very athletic. Yes. Yeah, I, I, as I said. Four majors. Uh, we were talking, yeah. Jim Courier's got to be up there. Um, you know, maybe as my deputy or something. Sure. Okay. Okay, okay so know. aliens come down. Right. They demand our finest redhead athlete mm-hmm. of the past quarter century. I'm gone. Past quarter century. I'm gone. I'm gone. You're there. I'm there. I'm there. You're you're a top. I'm volunteering, list. as a matter of fact. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I want to explore worlds. All it's, right. It is a. It, you heard Jim talking about it. It is a strange type of existence. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I I get emails consistently through the year because inevitably uh, the story will come out yearly about how uh, redheads are dying out in 50 years. They won't be right, right. So I, you know, friends love to send me those. Sure. Uh, I am doing my part along with my <laughs> wife. I, I I have a couple with the mutant gene. Perfect. Uh, so we're trying to keep it going as long as possible. But it is it is a strange type of existence as a redhead as a kid. You you do everything you possibly can to be normal as a kid and to be like everybody else and right. to have this 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 red hair. Um, it's not always it's not always easy. And but I always looked at it as something that that made me special. Sure. And uh, I continue to this day to be proud of the it's fact a good that time. I, I feel possess like, it. I feel like 2013 is a good time to be a redhead. I yeah. feel like we've. It's, I think it's actually sort of it, it's dovetailing with sure. soccer. The, Maybe the popular, that's it. Like you talk it. about. Amy Adams. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Nominated for Oscars, yeah. winning yeah. Oscars. But you know, there's also a whole separate thing where people that aren't really, they don't really have the mutant gene. Uh, you know, they get, they get, they dye their hair and they, and they suddenly become redhead. So who's a fake? Who, who do you feel like is getting too gonna, much I'm not, redheaded credit? I'm not outing them on on this show. No way. No way. You can figure it out. But you, it's you. Wow. You either. By the way, the, being a redhead 
ultimately has nothing to do with the hair on your head. Absolutely. It is something inside. It is something that, you that makes you unique. You are one of the two percent, right? And uh, you should be proud of it. And <laughs> I, I know I am, even sure. for all the crap that that I've taken over the years, and still take to this day, and probably I'm taking right now as people watch <laughs> watch this. Right. Uh, I, you know, I I am often called soulless. Wow. Um, yeah. And you, if I am, you better be careful. Wow. Right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I have learned to You wear love it like a badge of honor. It. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I can't think of... And any kids that are out there, listen, it, it, it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever hear from kids, like yeah. redheads yeah, that are yeah, like, hey, sure, you're like, it, sure. you're an inspiration. Sure. I, there, there was a story a couple of years ago where, you know, it's... Some moron uh, middle schoolers were beating up this kid because he had red hair and stuff like that. And I was this close to driving out to the middle school. Wow. Yeah. It, it, I mean, come on, man. And That's not it, okay. It, it, uh, it, you know, there, there, there is, a, there is a, a, a social type of acceptance of making fun right. of redheads. And it's fine. I, I have no problem with it. Right. But if you're a kid... You can't know, have that. Like, come on, man. Can't have this, that. It's, so if you're out there and if you are being bullied or picked upon because of your red hair, call me. And I will show up at the school and I will put the fear of... At Alexi Lawless. Yep, that's it. Yeah, at Alexi on, Lawless. On Tweet me and I will, I will come. He will, he will and be And I will there. bring an army. He will All bring right. a... Uh, and your first album, Ginger? Yep. There we go. Yeah. That's, that's loud it's and always, proud. It's always loud and proud. Right in your face. <laughs> <laughs> right in your face. Uh, I, I like it a lot. Uh, all right, so I can't think of a better way to go out. Uh, Alexi Lawless, be sure to check out AT&T and the, the BlackBerry Q20? 10. Q10? 20 is probably coming at it's, some point. It's yeah. happening. Do you have a favorite like app or anything? Like, Do you have a go-to app other than Twitter? You play games on there. I don't what play do you do? games. I don't play games. I mean, you know, it's. Uh, I take Twitter very seriously. You Instagram? So, uh, I don't Instagram. Okay. Uh, but I, they have this incredible new feature now on the camera. Okay. Where you're able to take a picture and it takes pictures before and after, and so then you're able to Just go in, in and case. edit. Yeah. And they told me the name of it, and I can't remember what the, the name of the function is, but it, it's it's very very cool. And and we were talking earlier about the you know soccer has changed in this country, and right. to, to to be with people like AT and T who believe in it as a sport and as a business, that's cool. It's cool to be living in 2013 and being in the soccer community in right. the United States. So it, it can just get bigger and better, and I'm excited. I'm, actually, I meant to ask you something, and you said you were going to save it for the show about Bob Lee. <laughs> in the snow, <laughs> the general. Yeah. yeah. How, what was that experience like to be – you have to be concentrating. Right, you right. have to be cognizant of the action. And at the same time, there is essentially a blizzard – happening upon thee. Yeah, so we did we did a qualifier for the US mm -hmm. in in Denver. Yes. And I I kid you not, I got up on the morning and I did a stand up for Sports Center and all I had on was my suit. It was beautiful weather, everything was fine Denver's and literally 6 hours later yeah. it was complete uh, like uh, what what is it the what the planet of Hoth or whatever you know the, right, right, the yeah, you yeah. know the uh, the Star Wars thing diagonal size snow and it just oh. came down and came down and luckily we got the game played but we were in the studio, but the studio was on site, so it was outdoors, and it just started to build up, build up. And myself and, and Casey Keller, my, my colleague, mm -hmm. were, were, uh, were doing, um, we're working with Bob Lee, we call him the general, sure. uh, an incredible figure in sports broadcasting. And uh, Casey and I have, you know, the, the, uh, the big fur hats on, and it mm -hmm. just gets bigger and bigger. And poor Bob Lee's trying to be as professional <laughs> as possible. He has all these notes all over, right. and the snow, and it starts dripping down, oh. and he can't even read his notes. But to his credit, he did not wear a hat. But to be fair, if you ever seen Bob Lee in the helmet that he has for oh, hair, he, he needed absolutely nothing to protect it's the himself. Hair but yeah. it, it was it was incredible. It's always a pleasure to work with Bob Lee, but to work in Bob with Bob Lee in a blizzard in Denver, uh, it is something that I will take to the grave. It's gonna he, be wonderful. He'd be that defensive end who doesn't wear the sleeves right. in like the zero degree exactly. game. Exactly, he's that he's guy. that warrior. He's that guy. And when he gets into the zone, I mean, it is he he knows. By the way. Speaking of, of people that love soccer, right. Bob Lee knows more about soccer than most of the soccer people that I know. And I love him for it. You need a champion, especially over at, uh, at ESPN with with what we're doing. And Bob Lee is right on top of everything we do. So. And hates redheads. That's oh, the yeah, only that's thing true. with you know, Bob. We, yeah. all, we all make our sacrifices. Sure, absolutely. All right. <laughs> Dan, I have I'm, one quick note. Oh, we do have I've, a quick note from the Alexi, booth. Alexi, I believe you're talking about the wonderful function called Time Shift. Yes, I was talking about time the time shift. shift, which is new on the, uh, the my Q10 here. They were teaching me how to work it. So, uh, yeah. 
that's that's uh, that's something that I will be doing. It will mean that the pictures that I tweet out from uh, my Q10 will be that much better and uh, much <laughs> more viewable because I can edit them. There's none and of the derp face like the yeah. There's no yeah. There's no longer any type of c- candid. Everybody is right. just edited and, and looking beautiful in this world that we live in. You sure. Know, when, you see, when you meet somebody for real, you'd be so disappointed. I I, I generally <laughs> am. You, you probably get that feeling yeah. right now yeah, after absolutely. this interview. No, I'm I'm thrilled. <laughs> uh, one thing we do before we end the show is we ask. What, what the favorite thing that you've done this week? Because it's the half hour. It's the end of the sure. week. It's been a, a sure. crazy sports week and all in all sorts of weird areas. But in your personal life, in your professional life, what what has been the 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 best thing? I guess not your professional life. In just your everyday life, what what has been the best thing of the week? It could be something you've eaten. Could be something you've watched. Something you've seen on the streets. Something you've done. What what has been? What is the identity? We talked about the American soccer mm-hmm. identity. What is the identity of Alexi Lawless's week? This and it could week? be anything. Anything in the world. Favorite thing of the week. Let's see. Um, I ate an entire pizza. That was the best really? thing I did. Yeah, John's on Bleecker. It was pretty good. I sat on a set, and I mm-hmm. watched soccer Okay. with, once again, Bob Lee. And okay. we shared a bag of Twizzlers. Twizzlers? And standard red. Just standard red. Okay. Yeah. And it was... It was it was intimate. I'll say it was intimate. intimate. It, was, it was wonderful. It was one of wow. those moments where we just, two guys watching soccer, eating Twizzlers. Brought together by the Twiz. Yep. I like it. All right. His name is Alexi Lawless. Be sure to check him out on Twitter and any anything else that he eventually goes on to with his beautiful Blackberry. Alexi, thank you very much thank for you. stopping by. Thank you. It's my by. pleasure. It's my thank pleasure. You.